We are at the Mall at Robinson on Saturday, February 12, 2011. The first public meeting of Bruno San Martino and Larry Zabisco in approximately 30 years. Bruno, can you tell us a little bit about your feud with Larry Zabisco and what it meant to the wrestling business? Well, you know, it started out that Larry, when he was in high school, he was an uh, outstanding wrestler, but his ambition was to become a professional wrestler. And as, a, as a high school kid, he approached me about wanting to become a professional wrestler. I suggested that he should uh, finish college first, and he continued his wrestling from high school to college. After college, uh, he came to me and worked out with me. We worked out together a good while, and uh, he started out slow up in Canada and a couple other little areas, but he developed very quick. And when he became a professional, Larry uh, uh, felt that, you know, he was doing very well, but he, he was uh, kind of uh, felt that he, you know, as Bruno's protege, he was kind of a little bit uh, holding him back because he, he felt that he was in a position where he wanted recognition on his own because he was extremely talented. And so, uh, so uh, he, he, he thought that perhaps if we did a workout, not a wrestling match, but a workout on television to show people our skills, and he wanted to show his skills to, with mine. And so uh, this was a range, and everybody knew it wasn't a match where we were trying to beat each other, but rather to see uh, who could outmaneuver who more or less, who could outwrestle who. But then as the thing went on, it got a little bit out of hand, and then it created some bad feelings. But those bad feelings became, we became opponents. But as opponents, they went wild. They went crazy as far as the um, popularity of it. We sold out Shea Stadium, 46,000 people. We sold out every arena that we went to and turned them away by the thousands. And uh, then, you know, Larry went about to continue his career, went on his own. I went on my own, but I was at the retirement age. And that was the end of it, and we never seen each other anymore. There were some bad feelings, but that's many years ago. So, yeah, time heals everything. So today, uh, when I was asked that he was going to be here, I haven't seen him in many, many years. Uh, I thought it would be interesting to, uh, to see him again. And so here we are. Thank you very much, Bruno. We'll get some comments later. This is an official like, hello, Bruno. All right. How you doing? That's true. And I said it's 30 yeah. years later. So, Larry, can you I'm give us some sure you Can you give us some comments of this reunion after many years in the Pittsburgh area? Well, you know, it's kind of nostalgic, Joe. It feels, uh, it feels good. It, it, the, only, the only thing is, it, it's those 30 years go by so fast, it's ridiculous. You know, it seems like yesterday, I was driving to the Civic Arena, and I can remember seeing the sign in front of the arena, you know, San Martino versus Zabisco. And in those days, I had to sneak in the back early, otherwise they'd smash my car. I had three cars smashed. I was stabbed, I was shot at. You know, riots every night, but it seems like yesterday, and all of a sudden, boom, here we are at some mall that didn't ex even exist at the time, and 30 years or so is gone. But at least I look the same, so I don't know about that. Well, thank you, Larry. We'll get some additional comments later. Okay.
Put him in a sleeper now. Yeah, there you go. Put him to sleep. Here with Larry Zabisco, Amala Robinson, February 12, 2011. Larry, can you tell us your comments or feelings regarding studio wrestling in Pittsburgh? Well, you know, the studio wrestling when I was growing up as a teenager was our religion. I mean, every Saturday night, you did nothing but make sure you were in front of that TV set when studio wrestling came on. And then we'd go out and do something, and then we'd all come back to make sure we were watching, you know, Chiller Theater. But studio wrestling, I mean, I can remember everything when George Steele wrestled the bear, but all the guys were great at that time. Everybody from Hurricane Hunts and the DeFazios and the Frank Holtz, of course, Bruno, but then they had, you know, Tanaka would come in. But, that, that was our religion. In fact, studio wrestling is the reason I am here. If it wasn't for studio wrestling, because I was raised in Chicago until I was about 12, 13 years old, we moved to Pittsburgh. It was the first time I ever saw wrestling on television. And when I saw studio wrestling, when I was 13 years old, I said, that's what I am going to be. I just knew it. It was like destiny. And, uh, of course, the rest is history. But that was... Uh, that's the force that molded my you know, destiny in life, is studio wrestling. Larry, you had your first match on television in the Civic Arena against Frank Dorso. Tell us something about old Slip Mahoney. Slip Mahoney Dorso. Well, you know, I was warned about his reputation. And the thing about Dorso was, even in those days, you know, that was before the days of video where you could record somebody and study them and their techniques. But I used to watch so much studio wrestling that when I got in the ring, and Bruno gave me a pep talk too, but as soon as I turned my back, as they rang the bell, Dorso attacked me. But because I watched studio wrestling so much, I knew what he was going to do, and I was ready for him. Outsmarted him and beat him in 17 seconds. That's got like to be like the record of like the Pittsburgh Civic Arena. 17 seconds, put him up in Bruno's backbreaker, and Slip Mahoney Dorso tapped out. So I should be the world record holder of the quickest match ever in the Pittsburgh Civic Arena. Civic Arena is still here, or is it torn down? Not torn down yet, but eventually it's gonna, I outlive around. I outlive the Omni, the Spectrum, the Civic Arena. It's not easy being the living legend, but someone has to do it. Larry, we really appreciate you coming here, and we look forward to your appearance in June at Westmoreland yeah, June 4th, right? Yes. Well, I'm looking forward to coming back in a time when I can wear my natural habitat of flip-flops and shorts, and it'll be nice and warm here. Thanks a lot, Larry. Oh, thank you, John.